In this lesson, we'll be talking about conducting an information search. The information search is iterative. Because we discussed the information search at the beginning of this series, this may give you the impression that once you do an information search for a position, you're done. Instead, throughout the job search process, you'll need to learn different pieces of information at different times related to the jobs you're applying for. The core question of the information search is, is this job a good fit? Your goal in the information search is to not only find out whether the job and all that comes with it is a good fit for your life at this point in time and for the advancement of your career. It's also to find out whether your background, skills, experiences, and personality are a good fit for the position, department, and institution. If a majority of the answers to these questions is yes, then you've found a good match. Once you've found an ideal job, work fast and hard on your job application and show the hiring committee that you're the ideal candidate. How can you tell whether a job is a good fit for you? The key words here are fit and you. In module two, lesson one, conducting a job search, we discuss criteria when you're looking for a job and how, depending on where you are in your career and whether you're looking for something short-term or long-term, your negotiables and non-negotiables may be different. Some of these might include potential for growth, location, benefits, cost of living, intellectual challenge, and community of practice. If you've not yet taken time to write this list for yourself, be sure to do so now. Without a clear idea of what you're looking for, how would you know when you found it? What resources can you access to conduct an information search? This is a stage when you can put your research skills to work. Most obvious, the starting point is the homepage of the hiring institution or department. Be aware that some academic departments have their own websites that are not linked to the general page on the university's website and you'll want to peruse both if this is the case. Additional official and unofficial information can be found through sources such as the institution's HR department for salary and benefits, as well as academia, Facebook or Instagram, LinkedIn, and Glassdoor for insight into work culture with a grain of salt. Information about the local area can be found through local newspapers, city and county websites, and travel reviews. You can also learn about the cost of living through various comparison websites available online or by doing a search for housing in the area. Remember, a dream job with a two-hour commute each way can easily turn into a nightmare. Make sure to really examine a job and know in your heart that you want the job. Then apply. If you apply half-heartedly, it does show. In this lesson, I'll be demonstrating a sample information search based on a sample job advertisement modified from a posting on the Chronicle of Higher Education. On an institutional website, it's not enough to just browse the homepage and skim through the menu items. To learn as much as you can about a job and institution, dig deep. Look for different types of information in the different stages of your application. In the initial stages, the mission statement will give you a general sense of whether the culture fits what you find important in your own work and, if applicable, your philosophy of teaching and or research. Faculty bio pages are clues to the specializations of the department and the types of students attracted to the school. Learning about faculty members' current and past publications, whether they're at the beginning of their career, mid-career, or well-established, and their service and other interests can all contextualize the current position being advertised. If the job advertisement indicates which courses will be taught, it's not enough to just know those particular course descriptions. A thorough information search helps you learn how courses fit into the curriculum for majors and non-majors. Sometimes past syllabi are also posted online. Your goal is to find out as much as possible, both about the position and its context. 
explore what is not explicit in the job advertisement. As you do so, make sure to jot down what you find out along with questions that come up throughout the information search. These questions may come in handy at a later time. Information gleaned from your search will also help you prepare for an even stronger portfolio. When you display some of your information search knowledge where pertinent in the cover letter, it shows you've done your homework and are serious about the position. Research knowledge about the position and its contexts can help you tailor your curriculum vitae to truly address the needs of the hiring institution. Once you've secured an interview, make sure to review the notes from your information search. Skim the bios of your prospective future colleagues to make sure you know their areas of specialty and the courses they teach. If possible, find out who's on the interview committee and learn about the people you might be speaking with. Current courses offered, news about the institution, and news about the local area are now easily searchable. Bring yourself up to date on the shared knowledge of your hiring committee, and this will help you gain additional confidence for your interview. Because applicants often don't do this step, having a good knowledge about the job and the context in which it occurs will likely impress the interview committee. This is a good time to identify two to three genuine questions you might have as a result of your information search. Before an on-campus or video conference interview, you can learn more about the student population via institutional Facebook pages, find local community organizations that may link with your academic or professional work, and identify institutional club or group leaders whom you may want to meet with in person. We know that most MA and PhD candidates go into academia for the passion they have in their field. The institutional culture and structure, however, cannot be ignored once you become an employee. Keep this larger context in mind. It will influence whether the institution eventually feels like home. Remember the phrase, there's no such thing as a dumb question? As teachers, we strongly believe this. In my opinion, there's only one exception. Yes, only one. And it's in the context of the information search. A dumb question is a question whose answer you can easily find in an information search. For example, during your screening interview, do not ask which courses are offered by the department unless you absolutely cannot find that information on your own. If a simple internet search shows the university's schedule of courses, then asking this question will show that you've not done your research. Remember, throughout the job application process, what you do is a reflection on how you may be perceived as a prospective employee. Do a comprehensive information search and ask smart questions to show your ideal employer that you know how to commit time to what's important.